What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Norm Rad 89 here, bringing you another Rad Movie Review. You know what's happening. We are on to Leprechaun 5. That means we are going to the hood. Leprechaun 5 in the hood, the fifth installment in this franchise. Let's get into this. And I haven't seen this one since I was probably like, I want to say like 13 or 14. So it's been a pretty good minute since I've seen this one. And of course, we're going to be talking some spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, go run out and watch this film and then come back so we can talk about it. So Leprechaun 5 in the hood is definitely one for me that was, after returning it to it, it's been many years since I returned this film, returned to this film, and it's definitely one that I expected a lot more of. I remember it being so much funnier, so much better than what I actually experienced on this last rewatch, but let's get into the story first, and the first crux of the story is we have... Two characters in the beginning, play one of them is played by Ice-T, <laughs> and they end up finding the treasure and all that stuff, like kind of in this rundown, I think it's like a basement or underground area like place or in a house, and they find the gold from the leprechaun. Leprechaun ends up having ensuing, like having a little battle, it's kind of like a little mini intro sequence, and he has a battle with them. Uh, Ice-T comes in possession of a flute that is part of the uh, treasure that the leprechaun has, and then he actually accidentally falls. The necklace falls onto the leprechaun and turns him back into a statue. So we're going with the route of having the pendant in this film. And that's what turns the leprechaun back into a statue. So that's actually a returning thing from a previous film. So that's also one nod I can give to this film. Is it does have some elements that it harkens back to... Leprechaun 3 and 4 in terms of grabbing some elements and what's happening, the pendant thing and the gold and the treasure and stuff like that. So there are some elements returning to it. So the writers did pay attention a little bit in this one to previous Leprechaun films. And then, of course, we fast forward to, I think it's, a year, if I remember correctly, it's like a year later. I can't remember offhand, but I think it's a year later, and ice T's kind of in that realm now where he's like the top dog. He's the gangster. He has a record label. He actually has the leprechaun like in his office in a case with the pendant on him so he could watch over him. So it's actually really smart. Like He goes a really smart route about keeping the gold and keeping his treasure and being able to live out his life while having the leprechaun trapped. Then we introduce our other main characters who are three and up and coming rappers who are part of a rap group or their rap trio. And they're trying to be up and coming and like make a big deal. And they're trying to get signed by Ice-T's label. And after he turns them away, they of course get the brilliant idea of going into his place, robbing him and all that stuff. And one of them wants the pendant that's on the leprechaun's neck. Once you take it off, of course, Warwick Davis is resurrected and we get our leprechaun back. So that's basically the main crux of the story with the first act taking us through the rest of the act. We are following these rappers trying to keep the flute because they end up coming in possession of the flute. Ice-T is after them. The Leprechaun's after them. So it's kind of like a MacGuffin type chase story thing. But it's just for this one, I just remember it being so much better. Even the dialogue's not as funny as the previous films. And this film does something that's criminally just bad in terms of movies, in my opinion, is being boring so there's a certain part in this movie where i just if i was really drunk or if it was the middle of the night i would easily probably fall asleep on this if i had a long day and i was tired or like i said if i was buzzed and drunk i would totally have fallen asleep on this movie so that's one thing that's criminally wrong with this film is it is boring there aren't really memorable kills or anything like that the leprechaun does use his magic a lot. He does enchant some women to do some things. He ends up getting high in this film, too, and smoking weed. So, like, we have a leprechaun. He gets to do a lot of funny stuff. Warwick Davis gets to go to space. He gets blown up. He gets to smoke weed. He gets to do all this crazy stuff as the leprechaun character. So that's what's really cool is he has a blast. He gets to have a lot of fun. But this film is just criminally boring. It's just, like, by the time we get to that third act, you really don't care what's happening and that's what kind of sucks with this film is like around the last 20 minutes of the movie there was like 20 minutes left and I was just kind of like ah, I'm ready for this to be over and like it's not that long of a film it's like about an hour and 32 minutes or something like that so it's not that very long of a film so when you're like and then almost through though we were like getting into the third act almost hitting the middle point of that third act and I was just like yeah I'm, I'm ready for this to be over so I definitely didn't have that great of a time returning to this film. Like I said, in my mind, back in thinking of this film, 
when I watched it back in the day, I had a lot more fun with it. Maybe it was because of that age and the age that I was at. And this film came out in 2000, and it definitely has that kind of late 90s nostalgia. So there's some things that I really like about this film. Like Warwick Davis is still great as the Leprechaun. It has that late 90s nostalgia feel to it, so I like that. And the fact that Ice T's in it, he's a very entertaining character and charismatic actor, no matter what kind of role you put him in. So he is enjoyable, but he's not in the film a whole, whole lot. So that's what I mean. You really have to like these other three characters that we're getting to follow. And like I said, they are kind of boring. So that's the problem with this film. It is a cool style and interesting to take the leprechaun to the hood, but I think they definitely could have done it a lot better and with this one you can feel less and less production value you can feel more straight to tv or straight to dvd vhs type film you know what i mean you can just feel it more as you're watching this movie so yeah that's what i didn't have as good a time returning to this one but of course, let me know in the comments section what you all think of Leprechaun 5 in the hood. Is this one that you fancy? Do you enjoy this one? Do you have some nostalgic love for this one? Or have you never seen this film? And if so, like I said, let me know in the comments section. Go out and check this film and let me know what you thought of it. Thanks for sticking around with me, y'all, for this another Rad Movie Review retrospective talking about Leprechaun 5 in the hood. Next, we're going to be on to the sixth installment in the franchise, and that's Leprechaun Back to the Hood. So we're going to see if this second returning, the second film returning to the hood, if it's better than this previous or this first try or attempt at it. Thanks for sticking around with me, y'all. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a safe and happy day. Peace out.